Okay, so is this an original IP? This is just a story. Just okay, so, yeah. so this is what I'm finding. A bit. Like, I'm, I want to understand why they haven't marketed this film because it is a solid original movie. To me, that's telling. That's that's showing me. Okay, like we've kind of gone past the stage of kind of like you know putting in our money and, and taking risks when it comes to original movies. Now we're just pretty much putting in our like what putting in our money and just like going for the movies that already have a successful IP. Have we passed so, the, the era of, you know, original movies? This is just not the kind of movie that makes a lot of money at the theaters. And this is um, this is the kind of movie that does well on streaming. This seems to be doing all right. But even with a full release, I'm not sure it would have made all that much money. I don't know. Like, this is not the kind of movie that a lot of people show up for. And the reason I wanted to talk about it is because I think it's just a really solid movie and just on the basis of here's a story to enjoy, I think it just works. It's a really good one. But not many people will go like pay like I like I'm not sure I like I, I really wanted to pay 16 pounds for like a movie ticket for this. I would have really enjoyed this had I found this one afternoon on Prime or something or on Netflix. And that is kind of the big question of like, where do these small movies belong now? Even get like Star Power. Well, I mean, like, this one is a big name. The Crosshold is a fairly well-known name. So is Tony Collette. Kiefer Sutherland is a big name. J.K. Simmons is big. Leslie Bibb is big, right? So there are known names with this, but it's not like the kind of movie that a lot of people show up for, right? Like that's why Joker is a is Joker, right? Because it's not just a taxi driver ripoff. Uh, it it like the reason it made money and it got people talking about it is because it had the name Joker on it, right? And like that is just the reality that most people don't show up for just stories, right? It has to be franchises. It has to be something something they know, right? And I can't really blame them for not taking a huge risk on like an original story that has no franchise potential. I like that, and I go, I go to the cinema for that. And failing that, I watch it on streaming and enjoy it and recommend it. And I know that now that's kind of heresy for like a movie podcast to talk about, let's just watch it on streamer. But like for something that's not very visual, it's kind of true. I don't know. Like I don't know what the best solution for this is. I, I, like, I think this movie deserves to be watched. I'm not sure that a theatrical release is the best strategy for it. I'm not sure. What was the point though? Because they spent 35 million on this film, on this film. So it's like a 35 million film with a limited release doesn't really make sense. You might as well just go all out. To be fair, it's not it's not the most expensive movie that would have been made to go straight to streaming. I'm sure there's like a lot of movies that are like bigger budgets than that. Not that, the most. And that went that went to streaming. I mean, at least this one had some chance of like recouping some money on its theatrical release before some of being on streaming to be honest so that's what they're trying to do now recoup some money i didn't know that's how like a lot of actors directors and so on just wanted to be in cinemas like there was this whole thing like so, like i don't remember who it was like but some fairly big director had a big fight with netflix recently about it i think there's a few and ultimately like they basically say it's a proper movie therefore i want to watch it in cinemas and i'm not that much of a purist about it i just nice I think whatever whatever gets people about whatever makes it available to people and makes this economically viable so that more more stuff like this gets made that's ultimately what i care about if cinematic release is the right answer for that then i'm for that if it's if streaming is the right answer for that i'm for that and i think streaming specifically has not really been figured out in terms of what is economical and how much our movies are worth and so on a lot of the time they do make more money if you put it like into cinemas but then you have to advertise and that's additional cost that creates additional risk so i'm not sure it's that simple but i don't know like i'm open-minded about this yeah i just find it strange i, I get 35 million is not a lot but still you invest that much money in a in a film like if netflix more. pays 50 million for this that's a profit like depending on how much they spend on marketing it yeah but it's, no What's but that? netflix but well, you've even mentioned this netflix's aim is just kind of like build up on their portfolio so yeah. i understand why netflix will make a 50 million dollar a 50 million dollar film no, no, like if, they, if netflix pays 50 million for this movie they're not going to pay 50 million that. and i and that's the that's pretty much like the reason why i asked this question because i'm like i don't think a production like a street like if they're recouping their money by sending it to a streaming service then cool but i don't think a streaming like a streaming um service is gonna actually pay 30 million for this movie i think they might like where well, they have to pay more than 35 right because that was the production cost right it couldn't even attract the audience in cinema so why would they go out their way to buy a movie 
that you know didn't do great in the box office sales, even though it had limited yeah. re- release. But the viewership is very different, right? Like the effort of watching this on your on Netflix when you already pay for a su- subscription is a lot less than buying a ticket, going to the cinema, making time for 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 five hours, whatever, right? In terms of getting this seen by people, Netflix might be the dominant strategy. But then you're passing up the box office, which for this kind of movie tends to be not very high, mm. right? Because I don't know, like like in the, like 30, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, people did go to the cinema to see movies like this, and today they kind of don't. That's a shame. Then people can't be complaining that it's not good movies out there because like there's movies like this, and you guys are not watching it, so it's like ah. So we're just yeah. gonna get continue getting used to like repurposed films, which don't really have a good story behind it. Just yeah nice visual effects so like like the complaints go both ways right like one one complaint is movies are trash and so it's not worth going to like taking a chance on some unknown movie so that i'm just going to go to the sequel of the movie i liked and in the other direction the complaint is that people just don't show up for original movies right so if you make one people don't come and i think both are a little bit true and i think just if if we can just when we find a good movie i think recommending it and making other people aware of it, I think is 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 a big part of the solution, I think. Like there are a lot of bad movies out there that I don't want to buy a movie ticket for, but I want to find the good movies, right? And I can't see all movies. There's like there's a sorting mechanisms through reviews and word of mouth and stuff like that, right? And I might not have seen this movie had it not been for this channel, right? But I'm glad I saw it. And maybe I would have seen it on Prime in six months or something. And then I would have liked it. And I would have said, hey, maybe I should have seen that in cinemas had I known about it.